Hello friends, welcome back. Sorry for the delay on this war video. I was running my second path in Labyrinth and editing some other stuff and this just kind of got by me. So this is War 7. We're taking on CTC2, the cutthroat something. Let's get right into it. So we're taking in, uh, I believe it's, sorry, it's, it's been a few days since this war actually happened. So I think it's, uh, yeah, Void, Warlock, and Namor, the trusty trio. And uh, let's see what's waiting for us. So path 8. Um, I'm going to start off with a Ronin here, a six-star duped Ronin on long-distance relationship. Uh, so I'm going with Warlock here uh, for two reasons. One, um, this person was running suicide, so once I get the infection up, uh, the suicides will assist in uh, damaging him for me. Second reason, I can just parry heavy safely in this fight um, because I'm not really too good at dodging Ronin specials completely yet. Um, it's a little bit tricky, uh, and it's you know it's a quick fight with Warlock, so he's bleed immune. If I do get tagged, uh, I think Ronan has some uh, pretty nasty bleeds going for him, so I don't want him to avoid those. But either way, what's that? 20, 23 hits. All right, so we're taking the right mini now. Uh, this is a Sentinel on uh, Russian armor. I think the note is, and maybe Optimist is the other one. Um, our opponents were running Bulwark. Um, so typically, a uh, person with Corvus would take this fight. Um, however, <clears throat> Corvus not really a good option for metal defenders with the Bulwark node up. Um, and Void's degen ignores you know, pretty much all that. Uh, and he doesn't do enough damage on either his basic attacks or his special attacks to really trigger the node anyway. So um, I can basically play this fight normally um, and just ignore the node, let the degen work. And eventually he'll uh, he'll get nuked down. So um, I don't think there's anything else special about this fight. I think I do miss time uh, an SP2 at the end of the fight, um, and it probably would have done significantly more damage uh, if Void wasn't incinerating you. Because uh, at that point, well, you can see right now he's got his analysis complete. Uh, so I think it doubles the um, doubles the length of any debuff effects that he places on you. So uh, a champion other than Void probably would not have been able to take an SP2 to the face. And uh, that kind of makes Sentinel an interesting defender. And in some cases, you know, he's people are so used to fighting him now. I think from you know map the old map five um, and whatnot that uh, it's it's rare for me to. To mess up like this against a uh, sentinel, uh, but it doesn't cost me a death, so I'm I'm happy either way. I think this is the one, yeah. So one, and then nope, nope, that's one. There's one more. So yeah, I'm struggling to find uh, banter here. I I stayed up super late last night editing the uh, guillotine video from Labyrinth, and uh, didn't get much sleep. The baby kept me up all night as well so uh yeah so here's the sp2 that i think i missed time yep so i take uh rockets to the face and uh, you can see it took about 30 percent or so of my health uh, but the incinerates would have probably killed me the rest of the way so okay moving on we are up to section one or section two the left path so path one section two um, I was on the fence about what to do about this Doctor Doom. This is an undupe Doom on um, masochism and recovery. Now, in general, I think Void is a great counter to Doom, only because the Petrify debuff uh, prevents, prevents his aura from ever triggering. Um, however, if you don't get Petrify up you know, early, you know, the aura is still procking, masochism is still procking, uh, Void relies on debuffs, so... Uh, it's kind of iffy getting debuffs to stick on him. Um, I think in hindsight, I probably would have gone with uh, Warlock if I had a chance to do this fight over again. Um, so even though Doctor Doom is armor break immune, so Warlock's SP2 really wouldn't be doing any bonus damage, um, the, the infection is quicker to get up. Um, and in addition to that, I could just parry heavy like I do with, uh, like a Captain Marvel on the following node. Um, I think this person you can see is also running willpower. So, uh, the parry heavy would work. The only thing I'd have to worry about, um, if I was using Warlock on this fight, 
uh, is the masochism timer because the parry stun would just get eaten um, instead. So I'd have to be careful not to get countered there. Uh, I'm not doing a particularly good job in this fight of dodging a special. As you see early on, um, I, I missed time two of them in a row, I think, and then that third one there I actually fully evaded. So the... Uh, the arm timer or the arm motion, I'm still just kind of getting used to it, so it's it's hit or miss. Most of the time I can dodge it effectively. Sometimes I slip up. You can also see here that uh, I'm getting super unlucky with uh, Petrify. This is the last two debuffs. Uh, and then my Dark Sting from my SP2 was eaten by a Masochism, so uh, just uh, lots of things working against me in this fight. Uh, we've got just over a minute left. Um, I'm still confident that the D-Gen is going to work him down, especially now that we have him heal blocked. Uh, we've got Fear of the Void up. Uh, he breaks my block there and lands a few hits into into me. I'm not sure what. <laughs> it's it's funny to see him like try and doom slap me, but I'm across the screen and he doesn't have a chance at hitting me. That's, that's amusing. So uh, Trying to bait out this special one here and oh, another success. There we go. Uh, so here his aura is still procking. That's because even though Fear of the Void counts as having a Petrify, it's only the effect of Petrify and it's not an actual Petrify. So what, you know, when Fear of the Void is up, but before you get your next, next Petrify up, the aura can come back. So still got the full AB, but uh, again, if I see that node champ combination again, I'm probably going to try with Warlock. All right, we have a blade here up on Buffet and uh, recovery. Uh, so we get a little break from our typical fight against Captain Marvel on this node, uh, but the strategy is pretty much going to be the same. Um, get the heal block up, and uh, this person is not running willpower, so I can't really use the, the parry heavy strategy. I actually have to gasp bait out special attacks. What kind of nonsense is this? Warlock isn't supposed to bait out special attacks. He's just supposed to keep them power drained. <laughs> so uh, I don't like to, to punish either of Blade's special attacks. I think you can, um, but there is a really tight window in terms of distance where if you are just, you know, beyond a certain point, he is going to parry you 100% of the time if you try and punish him. So uh, in fights where you can parry him, it's easier just to to take a, you know another parry hit and uh, counter from there rather than worry about taking some damage. So this blade goes down pretty easy. Uh, you know I could try and force him to regen, but uh, you know again the damage from Warlock is is fine, and uh, he goes down really without a problem. All right, so one more fight on this top section here. This is an unduped six star Domino, an R two. Um, this is the, what is this? This is uh, Buffet and why can't I think of what it's called? It's the one where they get the increased evade chance. Best defense, I think that's right, that's what it's called. Um, <laughs> I don't really know why I boosted up here. Um, I took all of these three fights in a row. I'm not sure why I didn't just boost up for the Doom fight and then the Blade fight. Like, it, it was really wasteful of me to, to use a boost just for this one fight. Um, maybe I didn't think that I was going to at the outset, but um, usually I, I, I err on the side of caution, so I'm not really sure what I was doing there. Alright, so this Domino is running uh, Suicides, you can see the poison, uh, and then she ate the bleed debuff at the very start of the fight, um, which is one of her abilities, I believe. Uh, but yeah, I, I didn't actually need to boost after all, because Warlock just, he just takes out Domino without any problems. All right, last fight for me is this Nick Fury R5 on uh, Enhanced Special 1. Um, so we're going to go in here and boost up. This is the following day, I think. Um, I think we're going to boost up. Yeah, not too much because I'm, I'm confident that Namor can, can take this fight. So I think it's yeah just a mutant special boost and then I think a, a light attack boost here just to round things out. So it's going to be interesting how how the Namor changes when they go live this week, how they're going to affect um, his use in war. Um, specifically because I think that the timer on the war fights is what's going to be working against you. Um, so Namor's damage is being changed a little bit. Um, he's going to 
he's going to bleed more frequently on his medium attacks, twice as frequently in fact, um, but that means that he's going to generate outrage at a slower pace against opponents that can be bled. Um, so in like shorter fights, um, he's going to deal more damage you know, from the bleeds. However, it's going to take him uh, you know, noticeably longer to get to his natural uh, cap for Imperious Rex of 30 stacks of Outrage. So um, I think in practical use for me in war, um, it's going to take a lot longer to get two passive Furies up than it normally would. Uh, in some fights... Uh, I mean, in bleed immune fights, it, nothing is going to change because he's going to proc outrage on every medium hit. Uh, but in fights like this against a Nick Fury, where uh, you know he's got two phases for you to kind of work through, and you really need <clears throat> as much damage as possible in order to get him down and into that second phase. Um, I don't know. It, it's going to be interesting. Um, I kind of wish that they had waited until the off season to implement these changes uh, because kind of having to work through um, work through the changes to him while there are still wars left in the season is going to be um, a bit annoying especially if if it turns out that uh, you know his his damage potential is significantly reduced in a war fight where you have to finish in three minutes um, and that could cause, you know, cost some deaths, cost a loss, you know, all, all sorts of things. So uh, disappointing that they, they couldn't have waited. Uh, but I understand that it has to be kind of released uh, with the with the app updates. So so uh, I've talked through almost this whole fight here. So we're we're just about have him down. Uh, we managed to avoid uh, him tossing uh, a single SP one uh, and one more SP one for me will get him down. So. So another pretty good war from me. Uh, low potion use, no death, but uh, by now you should know to expect this red screen at the end. Uh, we actually had some people uh, finally get tired of all the the losing, uh, and they left the alliance to go somewhere else before the rewards cut off. So uh, it, it's, it looks like we're going to be playing shorthanded for the rest of the season, uh, which pretty much guarantees that um, our record at the end was, is going to be like 2-10. and 10. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we can at least get enough boss kills to uh, stay at the bottom of Platinum 4. Uh, I wouldn't expect it at this point. So, all right, I got uh, some more editing and recording to do. So uh, I'm going to get to that. Thanks for watching. Sub for some more war stuff, some more Labyrinth stuff coming up later today or tomorrow. And uh, we'll see you next time.